Today on Ag News, we're going to be talking about cattle transport and bruising. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Thanks for sticking with us. Today we've got Steve Boyles again. Steve, welcome. Uh, we're going to talk about some cattle bruising from transporting, right? Correct, or or right. somewhere in that neighborhood, right? Yeah. So you've got some great information for us. I'd like to get right into it if possible. Glad to do it. All right. So uh, you've got uh, Linda Garcia, is that right? Lida Garcia. Lida, okay. So uh, where is she from and what, what, who, how, how do we know her? Well, she's a meat scientist at Ohio State University. Okay. And uh, she's been working in this meat science area, looking at bruising and some other factors. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's important that we're going to talk about this is well over $30 million a year is lost. Uh, due to bruising. You can't sell bruises. If it's on the carcass, uh, that's, the meat inspector requires that to be cut out. It's not used for any human consumption. So that's a lot of money lost. And this is happening uh, prior to slaughter, when the cattle are loaded, uh, transported, uh, packing plants. So we need to have a strategy to minimize this situation. Now, there is a program out there, if people are interested, Transportation Quality Assurance. You can go to bqa.org and get certified in one of these uh, different tracks, Farmer Rancher or the Professional Hauler. Uh, it's all free. Uh, we offer uh, training in person as well. But it's an issue that we're interested in minimizing the stress and bruising on cattle. A bruise can be defined as blood beneath the skin due to injury. And there's different things that can cause it. A force, something, you get hit, that's going to cause a bruise. If there's blood pressure there at that time, uh, you can get bruising. Really, a carcass can get bruised until they actually uh, uh, go through the slaughter process. So that needs to be rapid as well at the packing plant. Now, we do get the question, well, can you tell the age of a bruise? That, we're kind of fuzzy on how to do that. I think the answer's not going to be necessarily in meat science, but for forensic science to help us out there. But there is a general progression of how these bruises happen, uh, from pink, red, and then it goes down to uh, yellow, brown. So we get a feeling uh, over time on how old a bruise is, but the bruising we're probably focusing on is closer to day one or day two uh, for our situation. It starts with we've got these cattle typically in a pen mm -hmm. and we need to think about moving those animals out of the pen. On this diagram I have a one and a two. The one is where that's my go-to where I want to be to empty a set of cattle out of a pen. So I don't necessarily have to get behind them. I can open the gate and then just rock back and forth or <laughs> circle, triangle, and I want those animals when they see the gate open to walk past me, not as a, in the entire group. I want them to move past me in twos and threes. That's going to minimize some of the bruising. You can think about getting too many animals going through a one small space. They're going to bump into each other and on the sides of the gate. So like twos and threes. And also, while they're going past me, I want to see how they're walking. What is their locomotion? Is anybody limping? That sort of thing. And uh, so that's the first thing I need to do. Now, cattle are in, going to end up doing whatever they want. If that strategy doesn't work, then I, I walk past them and get to the back of the pen and slowly move the animals out. Uh, I also, I just mentioned locomotion score. We score the animals uh, one through four. One, the animal walks normally. A two, that's an animal that, yeah, there may be a slight limp, but they can stay with the group. Mm -hmm. A three, it's a more noticeable limp and, and they can walk, but they're going to gradually fall back. 
uh, as the group moves. And a four, just more severe sort of limp. This is important to know in that the animals that are, say, a four, they need to be the last on the truck, therefore the first off. That's a situation we don't want those animals deep inside the trailer or truck, and that increases the chances of bruising on them. So uh, animal with locomotion score that's a four or they have a limp, they're the last on and therefore the first off. This is a design at a packing plant trying to minimize bruising called a herringbone. What it is, is they're trying to minimize the turning of those animals. So you see that slight angle, they go from that unloading area where the trucks are into those pins and then into the packing plant and that slight angle reduces how much the animal has to turn reducing say them bumping into the gate or a post. Uh, there's some work uh, humans affect this uh, as well some work out of Canada the more experienced a truck driver is you're gonna have less uh, bruising less stress on the animals those people that have experience transporting cattle. Understand, moving cattle is like moving water. So when you go around a turn, think about if you have a, a, a big box or a trailer that's full of water. What happens? That water is going to go to the side. And when you stop, that water is going to go towards the uh, forward. And then when you accelerate, it goes to the back. The cattle in a transport act exactly like that. And so the experienced trucker understands that and takes curves gradually, uh, slow down gradually, accelerate gradually to minimize those animals bumping into each other. Uh, this is some work out of Kansas, and they walked cattle a mile. These large feedlots, uh, it can be a mile from the pen to the truck. Well, in the uh, first one, low stress handling, they had a lead rider in front of the steers uh, so they wouldn't run. One of the most important things we can do as producers is these market cattle that are ready to go to market, they need to walk. Don't cause them to run. Well, in the, anyway, in low stress, they had somebody in front of the cattle so they walked to the truck. In high stress handling, they opened the gate and let the steers go out of the pen, and they ran. Uh, you see, they, they covered a mile in seven to 10 minutes. Think about how fast that is for something that weighs about 1,300 pounds, and frankly hasn't been doing a lot of extras, about been eating a lot. Uh, that's uh, moving along pretty well. What we see is the blood parameters. Uh, we're not gonna dwell on each individual. Everything on that right hand side, increased blood lactate, uh, uh, reduction in uh, or decreased pH, those are not good things happening. The lactate is lactic acid, there's a buildup of that. If somebody's ever worked out, uh, maybe you had a burning in your arms, well that's lactic acid, the byproduct of metabolism. It goes away, but nevertheless that is stress on the animal. This is just an example. Here's a feed yard that uh, that's a walkway from the feed yard to the packing plant. And there, I, hard to see, but there's somebody following those cattle. But there's actually, I, this is my photography, so I apologize. There's somebody in front of those cattle as well. And they're walking those animals, not causing them to run as they come to the packing plant. Uh, here's the holding area uh, for the packing plant. So they're walking those cattle up to these holding pens at the packing plant. Well, this is what they're trying to prevent is dark cutters. This is the result of pre-harvest stress. We deplete the what's called the muscle glycogen. Uh, the, the animal on the left, that was an animal that was stressed for whatever reason. It could be rough handling, letting them run. Uh, maybe they're crazy. <laughs> that's disposition. And that's kind of related to genetics. Weather. Uh, cattle that have to be, say, transported in sleet for four hours. That's going to, they're going to shiver and that's going to cause a stress. Or say this summer, it's been rather warm, um, that can cause stress as well. So we need to minimize that the best we can. That meat on the right, the dark cutter, is not as attractive uh, for 
say, for the, the human consumer. We much prefer that uh, animal or that meat on the right, that bright cherry red color. That's because there's oxygen in there. That animal in stress, they depleted the blood oxygen and that you get that dark color. Well, there I said extreme weather. Mixing different pins of cattle prior to slaughter, uh, Ideally, you have animals that quote unquote know each other uh, together, so that minimizes the fighting. So, and I mentioned uh, temperament, that sort of thing. Uh, so those are not those are things that cause stress to the animal. Also, that decrease or the pH of dark cutting meat is higher pH. Bacteria likes a more nu neutral pH. Therefore, that dark cutting beef doesn't exist on the shelf. They're going to have to get rid of it sooner. And somebody may not buy it. They're going to probably have to move that product off the shelf. So there, none of those things are necessarily good for meat production. You can consider using moving aids, say moving those cattle. Although if you're going to use a stick, put a put a, a napkin or some sort of rag on the end of it. Cattle don't quite see as well as we do. They don't have as many rods and cones. So it's harder for them to see some things. So uh, make sure, or the end of a broom, uh, that's an example of something that they can see. Uh, we do use hot shots uh, to move cattle, but it shouldn't be your primary tool to move those animals. That only should be used if the animal's not moving at all, and just give it a little, uh, jolt and then let the animal move along. Uh, this is some work looking at the goal of uh, minimizing the hot shot. This is some work out of uh, England that showed excessive use of a hot shot reduces the water holding capacity of the loin muscle. You're going to have a lighter animal. Uh, muscle is over 70 percent water. Uh, therefore, uh, Use, overuse of a hot shot can affect carcass quality or carcass value. This is some uh, from a, uh, an assessment tool for feed yards. Uh, this is another talk, Dwayne, another time. Mm -hmm. But this shows that in a feed yard, if you use a uh, hot shot more than 10% of the time, uh, you're going to fail this assessment. And there's people watching you do this. So maybe that's a rough guide for when we're handling cattle for trucking. Maybe not more than that should be considered. Also, if you're loading cattle, normally this is going to be early in the morning, uh, could be dark outside, uh, put light into the, into the trailer so that they can see where they're going. That reduces their fear and they're not going to balk as much in these situations. Uh, this is some work with pigs, but the same thing applies. There was a dark entrance, 38% of the time they had to hot shot the pigs to get them to move versus if it was well lit where you were loading those animals, uh, minimal use of any sort of uh, stimulus was needed to get those animals to move. So maybe hang a, uh, a lantern, well, ideally with a frosted bulb, something like that into the uh, trailer. Or even if you, all you have is a flashlight, shot, hold it up over your head and shine it into the trailer. Don't, don't have it down by your feet. You're going to get muddy, just give that up. Put that light into the trailer when you're loading those animals. This is some uh, work from the National Beef Quality Audit. This is on thousands of cattle. They collect carcass data at packing plants. And this is carcasses without bruises, past, present. And 2005, about 64% didn't have bruises. We made improvement to 2011, 77%. But now we're back down to 61%. Um, some of that, I don't want to say we're handling cattle rougher. We're making cattle bigger. And the bigger they are going into a truck or trailer, that's probably going to increase the chances of getting some bruising. Well, here's a picture. Dr. Garcia provided this uh, photo of a bruise on a loin. And so that's going to have to be cut out. And there is pounds lost or meat lost. This is some uh, another, I'd have to say this is an extreme case. That, that is the loin area. That's where the steaks are located. Mm -hmm. And of course, we all know steaks are more expensive than <laughs> other yeah. parts. Uh, all that's going to be cut out. And that, therefore, this, is, this animal, I don't know how it uh, average daily gain or, or feed efficiency. It's going to lose money because of all that high value loss. 
Uh, this is just another example of some bruising seen on the side of the animal. And uh, once again, with USDA inspection, that's a required to be cut out. So there's a lot of loss happening there. This is calluses. This is not necessarily a bruise. Well, I'll, I'll put it this way. It's a bruise that happened a long time ago, and it was very traumatic. So the, the, the loin on the left is a normal loin. The one on the far right, that's not fat. That is connective tissue. This animal was in a severe injury. Maybe it got stomped on when it was a calf. Mm -hmm. And so over time, you have that. Uh, so you think about an individual that's been in an accident, maybe they don't walk normally uh, in the situation, uh, that's connective tissue. So that's severe trauma early in life. So even the cow-calf producer, I know we're focusing on cattle near market, uh, the cow-calf producer needs to pay attention on how those calves are being treated because this is the result of that. This is uh, some data of cattle arriving at a packing plant and where bruising was happening. This was over a 24-hour period, over 4,000 head of cattle. Uh, half of them basically uh, had some bruising. Uh, there's minor, moderate, and severe uh, on how much bruising. But I, I look at that bottom part of the slide. Uh, a lot of this bruising, 61% was on the dorsal midline, that's a fancy thing for the back. Uh, not a lot of difference on the left or right side, but we had some bruising happening on the backs of these animals. And this is just a diagram, uh, Helen Klein, a uh, recent PhD candidate at uh, Colorado State University, had this on some work she had. And the darker the color, uh, that basically means where there was more noticeable bruising on this animal. So once again, kind of on the back we see these bruises. This we think is happening in the trucks or these pot bellies or at least one place. When we load the cattle into that bottom area uh, we may well be getting some bruising. Uh, you can put about 15 head of cattle in that bottom part of that trailer uh, riding in the belly. This we think is where the bruising is happening. So, so you're a market steer, you come into this trailer and you see a set of steps. Uh, you may not know what those are. Yeah. So you're tempted to perhaps jump uh, over that and you might hit the top of that, uh, well, as you go into the belly. So we may think about putting a, something to hide those steps a little bit, but at least move the cattle slowly into that trailer. Give them a chance to walk down those steps. Also, you can think about putting some bedding over those cleats in the bottom. So we have that area here, we have these steps. Uh, maybe also if you've got tall cattle, you've got, maybe you've got some uh, Angus steers and you've got some Holstein steers. Maybe you put the Angus steers, we're typically shorter, into the belly, maybe the Holsteins uh, on top, although then we get into weight. You don't want most of your weight on the top of the, uh, the trailer, you make them top heavy. But anyway, think about height, if you, if you can sort a little bit. Uh, these cleats, uh, we need to think about them too. They could be something to cause the animals to jump because they may not recognize them. So think about, and this, putting bedding down the middle of the trailer. This is not Steve Boyles an ex expert. This is talking to truckers. Uh, if you can put down bedding through the middle of this area, they see that and they're gonna walk onto it. And they'll spread the bedding, so you don't necessarily have to put it throughout the entire truck. Uh, they'll spread it for you. So that may reduce some of that temptation to jump. Uh, they're building new trailers uh, with lower floors, higher uh, ceilings, but that's, to be honest, we can't expect this to change overnight. That aluminum trailer is a wonder in engineering. It is, I call it an $85,000 pop can. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing how much pop we have in, in those cans and move them around. Well, you have to be careful you don't dent that thing. But uh, so $85,000, we're not gonna go to all these new trailers overnight. In one study, it was observed that low spacing can cause carcass bruising too. So if there's too much space, those cattle, remember, move like water? Well, they can move around a lot. But it's, at the opposite end, you don't want to overfill the trailer either uh, because that can cause bruising too. So uh, check with the manufacturer on your stock trailer. Uh, also with the, certainly these pot bellies on proper, uh, uh, how many put a, 
cattle in there. And cattle are going to move around in these trailers. Uh, they may stand at right angles. They can spread the bedding, bedding that way. Or in stock trailers, they may well just face forward. This is a percent of cattle uh, in different compartments. The middle compartments, those the upper and lower, they have about 60% of the cattle. Where in the front, we call the nose, about 10% of the cattle, and the rear area, about 30% of the cattle. And this is where bruising's happening. 45% in the nose. Uh, look at that top deck, 33%. And it's real tall. You can stand, a person can stand in that top part. That belly area, it's tall enough for the cattle, but an average person, you're gonna have to bend down or make sure you bump your head. And here we see a little bit higher bruising. We think, once again, it's coming from maybe that step area. In the, in the rear area, uh, there's also some bruising that can happen uh, in the small compartments that they have. Once again, this is some data by Helen Klein out of Camp Colorado State University. Also, think about unloading the cattle. Is it too steep? Uh, that unloading area, if it's a ramp, uh, make it longer so it's not so steep for the cattle so they don't fall down. If they fall down, you're going to get bruising. This is some work uh, also by Helen Klein. This is the packing plant. We're moving away from the truck and these cattle are being held overnight. So that's a pin for the cattle under capacity. That's not necessarily a bad thing, to be honest. Uh, there's a picture of cattle at capacity and then perhaps over capacity. If those cattle can't lay down, that's gonna cause a stress. Kind of back to the dark cutter situation, mm -hmm. or they may you know, bump, bump into each other and cause bruising. So this is overnight. Therefore, for overnight, uh, uh, pen space, uh, the American Meat Institute has specifications. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on those right now. This is more of a packing plant issue, uh, but you might have to look at that. If you're bringing cattle into a packing plant and they talk about your bruising, you may wander, wander over to packing plant and see if, uh, make sure they're not the situation. Well, a bruise, we're still at the packing plant now, mm -hmm. a bruise can happen before stunning, even after stunning. Uh, they cease getting bruises uh, after exsanguination. When there's no more blood pressure, you don't get bruises. So you have to be rapid in, in that process. This is at a packing plant. Uh, uh, Dr. Garcia and I were at, and this is going into the packing plant. The cattle are being uh, assimilated right there before they go in. And I'm, I'm showing you on the lower right-hand side a backstop. Now these backstops at this packing plant are substantial. They could hold a rhino. They are that big and heavy. But this is just Look at, there's the bruising right uh, by the tail. Uh, we, th we did a little bit of experimentation. I give credit to Dr. Garcia. That backstop would fly up in the air and then come back down and land on the back of these cattle. It was like a brick hitting the back of the animal. So that bruise is, oh, about five minutes old. So even at the packing plant, we were having some problems with bruising uh, with those backstops. So we think there's some future in looking at some design issues uh, at these uh, packing plants. And so that is kind of why we think cattle transport uh, is important. And there's things here that are manageable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a, that is a lot of information. <clears throat> Excuse me, it, it's, it's good information, I think. Uh, I've got a few questions. So back at the beginning, we talked about um, the drivers or the stock stock, stock drivers, <clears throat> and they could go through a training session. Yes. Does a driver have to have some certification to be a cattle or, or livestock hauler? Come January 1 of uh -huh. 2020, some packing plants are going to require anybody, a hauler, bringing cattle to their packing plants uh -huh. to be this BQA transportation certified. I'm not saying all packing plants, but, but certain companies are going to require it come okay. January 1, 2020. Wow. Okay. So that's good. Um, and then uh, uh, with that, obviously, how many trucks does a packing plant go through? 
a day. I oh, mean, do, do you? I mean, is it? Are we talking hundreds? Hundred thousands. Well, that research yeah. data from on bruising, there was mm -hmm. over four thousand head of cattle. Wow. Uh, that's and a lot of trucks. That is a lot of trucks. Wow. Okay. That uh, interesting. And and you said that a um, a bruise can happen just quickly. Yes. So there, like there was you've seen that five one minutes. Five minutes. So, how, how does that um, compare to an an aged cow? Um, uh, I know most of most of the the cattle that go to a packing plant are, are fairly young or, or about the same age, but obviously there's going to be some that's older. Uh, maybe you know get squeezed in there. Yeah. Would are they more uh, acceptable? Uh, acceptable to bruising more than, than not? Yeah, they are. Actually, a, an animal that's, say, thinner, you yeah. don't have that yeah, fat Yeah, cover. I guess, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. you can expect uh, mm -hmm. more of the bruising to show up on that, that thin animal mm -hmm. than an animal that's got fat or condition on it. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, and, then, and then about the ones that may be, um, we, we talked about uh, lame or limping, is there any kind of procedure for those? Obviously, they're still going to be slaughtered, but do they do any kind of uh, special uh, testing of those? Well, maybe they're, if there's something wrong. Yeah, uh, the, the, they do uh, uh, inspections on residues, that sort of thing, on mm -hmm. these animals. Mm -hmm. uh, but if let's say we've got a couple of those animals that have a, a lameness issue, mm -hmm. they're going to be slaughtered, harvested sooner, sooner because they came first off the truck. The truck. So that's one of the situations. Okay. I will hasten to say if an animal at the feed yard cannot get up, get up. or it arrives at the packing plant and cannot get up, uh -huh. federal regulations say that animal cannot, cannot be slaughtered at all. Okay. So if you've got an animal Good. like that at the feed yard, mm -hmm. don't load it. Right. it. The packing plant's not going to take it. They, they'll just, and, and do, do they just, oh, I mean, I, I don't know, and, and and you may not know the answer either. If wh what happens if it gets de gets hurt on the truck? So it walked on the truck, but it could not get off the truck. That is animal? that is it? Do they just discard that animal? Yes. Does it go back to the owner? Back to, or they just? No, uh, that's a good turn question. It in, turn I it imagine into into alternative food. Uh, it, for it's animals. not even for food. It's, they it's just, condemned. Federal they just regulations: an animal that can't get up, mm -hmm. uh, we can't sell that product. Okay, good, good. All right. Well, uh, lots of lots of information. I I, I, I liked it. Um, I know we got some more to come, so stay tuned. Uh, we will be back uh, with another uh, segment uh, later.